Welcome back to Fox and Friends, 22 minutes now past the hour. Well, the latest NASA discovery has sure made a splash back here on Earth. They found a significant amount of water on the moon. So what does this mean for the future of space exploration and mankind? I'm joined this morning by Michio Kaku. He's the professor of theoretical physics and the author of Physics of the Impossible. It's now out in paperback. Great book. Pick it up. Michio, nice to see you this morning. Glad to be on. Okay, so what are the implications for mankind now that we have found with that rocket that we shot into the Earth or the surface of the, of, of the moon, that we found this water there. What are the implications for us? This is a potential game changer. NASA has hit pay dirt. You realize that ice is worth five times, pound for pound, five times the value of gold on the moon. This could change the way we view space exploration, living off the land, using the ice of the moon. And because if we then go to the moon, we could then set up permanent bases there for deeper exploration. Is that right? That's right. Hydrogen can be used for rocket fuel. The oxygen in the water could be used for breathing. Water could be purified and drunk. And also, water is a good shielding against solar flares and cosmic rays in outer space. This was an $80 million gamble. It's, it's, it's simply paid off in spades. So is this politically important, though, for President Obama? A lot of people saying, well, how can we afford this, right? That mission where we blasted that thing into the surface cost $80 million. Does this gamble pay off? politically for President Obama? It puts pressure on Obama because the Augustine report has said more or less the Yanks are not coming. We're not going to go to the moon. We're not going to go to Mars with the present budget. If we can shave off billions by finding water on the moon and, quote, living off the land, that cuts the cost of the space program. And that puts pressure on Obama to perhaps give the green light for a manned space mission to the moon. Why, when we watch that video, I mean, universally, I mean, even here on the show, we were watching it live here on Fox and Friends, and you should have seen what people were saying in the Twitter, Twitter sphere and on Facebook, people were saying it was kind of a dud. We didn't see much. There wasn't much to see. But it was really what the scientists then gleaned a few days later that was really important, right? Back in October, NASA got a black eye because it wasn't done. We were expecting the money shot. Well, for a scientist, this is the money shot. We got sensors showing 24 gallons of water in a crater 60 feet across. That's huge. 1%. 1% water in the composition of underground rock. And it was expected to be much like what we saw on Jupiter. What with that comet or the, uh, I forget which comet it was, or that asteroid. Shoemaker-Levy. Yeah, Shoemaker-Levy 9, whatever, smashed mm -hmm. into Jupiter. We saw this massive explosion, and we learned quite a bit about the planet there, right? We're, we've been spoiled by Hollywood. We expect to have fireworks and all sorts of uh, py uh, pyrotechnics take place. But space is different. We scientists are looking for the water. Follow the water. That's the mantra in the space program. Where this water, there might be life, plus rocket fuel, air to breathe, uh, water to drink. Water is really the stuff of life. And, you know, for those people who, I always get sort of frustrated by this, but I think this is something that's wholly American about this whole, this idea of adventure, being an adventure, adventurous spirit, going out there and exploring the universe, and the money that we spend on the space program has massive implications. You see it all the time in your work, right? Uh, think of what happened when LBJ went on television to announce the fact that our first weather satellite in the 60s warned the great state of Texas that a hurricane was coming. Thousands of lives were saved. Billions of dollars of property damage were averted. And then LBJ announced, quote, the space program has paid for itself today. <laughs> Saving That's lives. That's so true. Yeah, and that spirit. Well, Michio Kaku is also launching a new show. You have a new show on the Science Channel starting in December. Tell us about that. It's called Sci-Fi Science. Teleportation, ray guns, force fields, uh, antimatter, <laughs> warp drive, you name it. We cover it on the Science Channel December 1st, a weekly show. Twelve episodes of everything you've seen on the silver screen. Is it safe to say good geek stuff? Uh, it's geek friendly. Yeah, all right. Michio Kaku, uh, I'm a fellow geek. I appreciate that. Nice to see you this morning. Good luck with the show. Okay.